Brace yourself, everybody. Uh, I see you brought uh, your cheering section tonight. This is half a set free, isn't it? Uh, this is just a little small group we brought over here tonight just to show the whole wide world we're excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's been a little while since I've had fellowship with Pastor Phil. I mean, I'm over in the Holy Land. I'm up in Russia. I'm going around the world. He's out giving the devil trouble also. But I have been disturbed by a bunch of... I'm just going to say it. A bunch of crap. If the Apostle Paul can say dung, I can say... Whatever. That was kind of his word, I guess, in his day. <laughs> There's been some nasty stuff in the papers and pinned up on bulletin boards, and boy, there's a gang out to really give you trouble. I, I don't know, Phil, what... Uh, the charge seems to be, uh, is set free a cult? I, is that the question? Well, there are those who um, don't seem to understand exactly what a, a cult is, and I think tonight... Uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to be able to share some truth that will let people know that the group they're looking at in this audience and the multitudes that we get a win to Jesus Christ are not any part of any cult. They're part of the family of God. All right. I bet we got them hooked tonight. Stay tuned, dear friends. Well, the word cult is simply a short abbreviation of culture. And we have a right to culture. See? Will there be any blacks in heaven, or will we all be Caucasian? Mm. <laughs> how, how would we know that there are those from every tribe and nation and kindred and tongue and if we were all white? Mm -hmm. See? So, uh, these are important thoughts. Interesting. Yes. And God loves variety. He loves variety. Yes. So, bla black, black is beautiful, but it involves a culture. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a black man any more than I can because I can't think black. Mm -hmm. See? Right, right. Once in a while, I can eat black, but no, I can't yeah. think black, no. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful to see him, a great, great leader among us, amen. I think uh, a little of the criticism maybe goes beyond just culture and even race. I, you know, I don't know, what, what, we're all probably Heinz 57 varieties, aren't we? You're what, part Indian, part... Uh... Uh, part Indian, uh, part Mexican, and a whole lot of soul brother in me, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you full of culture tonight, aren't you? Yeah. According to Dr. Ward, Ward, Ward's <laughs> definition, at least. But uh, it also cuts to the heart of the modus operandi of a particular ministry. And uh, those who would like to brand Set Free a cult, you better stay tuned. You better stay tuned. You just might get a little help and a little understanding as to what you've been doing. And I can tell you one thing, some of this stuff going on, if, if it's done by people who claim to be Christian, I think they're going to have to redefine the term. We'll, we'll talk about that very seriously in just a little bit. Just real quickly, uh, what, what is the latest and greatest in Set Free? Uh, in spite of all the opposition and the bad news and the whatever, you're still, what, blowing and going, aren't you? Well, in spite of um, uh, the enemy's tactics and things like that, Set Free now is 50-plus uh, strong churches in about 10 different countries. We have our big Thanksgiving Joy Festival coming up November 11th, 12th, 13th at our new headquarters in Set Free Pomona. And tonight, and tonight, 
God really spoke to me in a confirmation. We've just started a ministry in Huntington Beach with Pastor Tim Trader, and I believe with all of my heart that tonight I got confirmation that God wants us to kick off another major headquarters in Orange County, another set free that will just reach multitudes here. So, I mean, set free is on the move for Jesus Christ. All right. Well, I expected you to say something like that. Okay. Let's uh, agree together right now and have a, a time of prayer. Uh, why don't you all just join somebody's hand right there with yours, that little symbol that we are agreeing one with another. Carmen, I'm going to ship it back to you there in Texas. Would you just uh, take us to the throne of God in prayer? Let's invite the precious Holy Spirit to come tonight. And then uh, just take it away and give us a little song service, okay? Heavenly Father, we love you. And Lord God, we, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have the opportunity in this country to preach the gospel over the airwaves. And I pray right now, Lord God, that any hindrances in anyone's mind or in their life that would prevent them from hearing or receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ will be pulled away. That Satan, you have no power in their lives. You have no authority. You are the one who blinds. You are the one who disguises from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And right now, Lord God, we ask by the agency of the Holy Spirit that you will pull away the blinders. Let your gospel go forth. Let it breed life. Let it breed health. And let it breed holiness, Lord God, into people's minds and hearts. We pray, we agree that these things shall take place this evening. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Music number, our next guest yes. is in it. If you'll watch yes. carefully, you will see Pastor Phil Aguilar. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of Vern Jackson's all-time classics, We'll Never Grow Tired. Anybody want to fly high one more time? Come on, let's do it with Vern and Pastor Phil. I've heard once a bird has a broken wing. He can never fly high anymore. Let me tell you what I know It's not always so Cause once I lay broken and sore I fell from above Like a wounded dove With no hope of ever flying again but with grace from above and God's marvelous love I'm flying higher than I've ever been higher than I've been wounded prey then old Satan like a vulture he swept low in my darkest hour that's when he came to devour what was left of my wretched my dying soul Yet. He saw more good than I ever saw in me. Now I live above the doubts, 
so high in the clouds that I can't see the tops of the trees higher than I've ever Yesterday sin Where eagles can't soar I can see heaven's door I'm flying higher Than I've ever been Whoa, where eagles can't soar I can see heaven's door I'm flying higher than I've ever been. Vern Jackson and Phil Aguilar and Big Sur <laughs> and all of the Wonderful, wonderful scenery. That is still one of the classic videos, in my opinion, and a song that always ministers, no matter how many times you've heard it. Well, now y'all hold it and let me finish my introduction, okay, before you just <laughs> burst forth into mighty applause. <laughs> Pastor Phil Aguilar, after a life of drugs and violence, surrendered to Jesus in the Chino State Prison. Upon release, he studied and received his Bachelor of Theology degree and was licensed as a Baptist minister. In 1982, he founded Set Free Christian Fellowship. Set Free has grown to over 50 churches across the United States, has planted churches in over a dozen foreign countries. And I might just add that in spite of hell and high water, it's about to get its second wind. Let's welcome Pastor Bill Aguilar. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil, there's one scripture that you can take comfort in tonight. Jesus said, beware when all men speak well of you. <laughs> yes, you're right, brother. <laughs> you are in safe territory because all men are not speaking well of you, are they? No, that's, that's true, sir. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I, uh, I need your prayers tonight to keep my blood pressure down as I've heard some of the egregious things that have been uh, said about Pastor Phil and some of the unscrupulous news articles that have been written about him, some of the attacks by so-called brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I think some of you that have been attacking Phil Aguilar had better have heard Dr. C.M. Ward's definition of what it means to truly be born again. <laughs> Pastor Phil, uh, I've got a few little things I'll zero in on in a minute, but give me a little state of the union message on Set Free and particularly Pastor Phil. Well, well, where I... I, I tell people I am on a comeback. I think about Mike Tyson, one of my favorite boxers in the world, and I couldn't wait for him to get released so he could come back and knock everybody out. And uh, the Lord showed me that uh, in my own life, I went through some difficult times, some struggles in my own personal life, not to mention the attacks from the enemy. And uh, the difference between me and Mike Tyson is, is I made sure to get everything right with the Lord Jesus Christ. So in my own personal life, man, I've never been so excited so in love with Jesus Christ, my family, especially my Christian brothers and sisters that set free, that I'm going to come back now to where it doesn't matter what happens. I want to give the devil all he's bargained for and all he's asked for. And I've got an army full of brothers and sisters who are not behind me like it used to be, but I mean shoulder to shoulder. Hey. And we're just giving the devil hell. He <laughs> deserves <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
<laughs> you know, I want to I want to tell Pastor Phil something very special that happened this morning. And I haven't even gotten to talk to you to share this with you, so I'm just going to share it with everybody that's here. Um, early this morning, I was awakened, and um, I knew that you were going to be on tonight, and we hadn't gotten to see you. And, you know, I, I can't tell you what goes on in my heart, too, when I hear a brother ever criticize or hurt another brother, because I know what you did for people. We lived around the people that your ministry helped and brought out of the crypts and the bloods, and they were living on the ranch in Texas, wonderful, beautiful people that were saved by the power of Jesus Christ, hell's angels that were, their lives were changed. I know what Pastor Phil has done in his life to help change the world of kids that most of us will never reach in our lifetime. And I, I didn't know how to say it. And, and this morning I was just laying there and I was praying, Lord, just give me something. And all of a sudden, Pastor, this would have, I never would have applied this to you except that the Lord wants you to hear this. Just as Joseph was sold into slavery by none other mm -hmm than his own brothers. The story of Joseph, he was sold into slavery by his own brothers, blood brothers. Yes. And in the Christian field, we should even be closer than blood brothers. I mean, we are God brothers. <laughs> but Joseph was sold into slavery, but he went. He could do nothing about it, he went. Lies were told about him. Potiphar's wife told lies about him. He was put in prison, helped everybody, even in prison, helped some of them get out, and yet they forgot about him. But he never let his spirit get destroyed. He never forgot that God somehow in the midst of all that hell was watching him. And Phil, this is the word from the Lord. In the end, when your spirit is kept sweet like Joseph was, you will be able to give and minister to those toward the end that have tried to destroy you and have sold you into slavery. That is from the Lord, believe me. And the slavery part is to try to get you back into the world, but it won't work. In the end, you will be ministering just like Joseph was to those that tried to destroy you. That is of the Lord. Yeah. I guess if we summed all of the bad news up, it kind of gets distilled into one major charge that set free as a, quote, cult. Now, obviously this is a, a sympathetic group here tonight. How many of you have been or presently are set free members? Just wave, wave at me up there. Almost the whole audience here tonight. Uh, do you all understand what a cult is? Let me, let me give you a couple of good points. A cult is a group where your mind is controlled by a leader, such as the, the David Koresh cult. That was, a, that was a true cult, okay? It's where you do not have the freedom to come and go as you wish. It's where you are virtually in a, a prison of sorts. It's where you don't have the freedom to think for yourself or make decisions for yourself. You must always look to this so-called cult leader to make your decisions for you. I just want to ask this group, is set free a cult? No. <laughs> uh, can, can, you, can you walk out of set free anytime you want to? I've seen them do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I've seen them do it. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> you sent some to the ranch and hey, they you left. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? 
let, let, me, let me tell you something. In some cases, it was of the Lord that they leave. Yeah. Because it was time for them. They, they had gotten their lives straightened up, and they'd gotten, uh, you know, back with the Lord, and it was time for them to get back into society and productive society and get a job and go to work and raise a family and do all the good things that we want them to do. But, you know, Jan and I were talking about this the other night, and uh, she said something that I think will help clarify this. What a lot of these accusers of Pastor Aguilar and Set Free don't realize, see, they've never mm -hmm. gotten their hands truly dirty. That's right. Yes. Taking people out of the gutter and yeah. putting a 250-pound hell's angel and letting him sleep on your living room floor. Let me tell you something. When you have 40 of them sleeping like cordwood in your living room and in your dining room and your kitchen, in the bedroom. And your daughter's in the back yeah, yeah. bedroom. You're going to have some rules, friends. That's right. You're going to have some a lot tough of rules. rules. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, <laughs> I just, I I just want to say one thing. And, and we're not going to no. beat a dead horse. We're going to get into some ministry, ministry. here. I, I, That's right. My philosophy is make the devil eat, eat our yeah, dust. <laughs> that was Joseph's philosophy, too. That was, it, it right. was indeed. But, but I want to tell you something. I, I say this with, with real Christian love in my heart. I, all I can say is that you people that have, have been putting these things up on posters in public places, you better be glad I'm a Christian. And you better be glad Phil Aguilar's a Christian. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. Beware of set free. They will do and say anything in order to have people join their cult-like group. They speak about Jesus Christ and they claim to be Christians, but be warned, they are not real Christians. Brother, I want to tell you something. Saint or sinner, that is dangerous stuff. And if you claim to be a Christian and are putting this kind of crap up on walls and, and telling people this kind of stuff about people, you know, do you remember Dad Billheimer, our, our sweet little brother? He told me, and, and I, I told this to Phil a little earlier, but I want to tell it to some who are watching right now, and I know you're watching. <laughs> yes, and you, taping. And taping it. Taping it. Go ahead and tape it and yeah, put it on please. your slime bag radio broadcasts. <laughs> Dad Billheimer told me one of the most shocking things many years ago. He said, son, the greatest sin in the body of Christ is that we judge one another. And I, at the time, I didn't really think that sounded right. You know, we always put fornication and adultery and murder and rape and all of this as, as the, the, the grossest kinds of sins. But he said, I'll prove it to you, son. When you raise your finger or your voice and judge your brother and sister over here. And by the way, they may need judging. All of us need judging, don't we? But who is the judge? God alone is the judge. He said, when I judge my brother over here, be it Phil Aguilar or anybody else, I have just said in effect to God, God, you get off your throne. I'm going to judge him for you. That was the sin of Satan in yeah. the first place. And I want to read all of you cult watchers. I've got a new... <laughs> I've, we've got heretic hunters, and now we've got cult watchers. <laughs> Let me read you a scripture from Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Now John answered him, Jesus, saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name. And we forbade him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, 
for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. And then Jesus goes on in this very same next verse and says, now here's where you'd better hear me, you who claim to be Christians and are persecuting and making accusations and charges that are a lie. Whosoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the depths of the sea. I say, for your own good, you better cut it out. Because I'll tell you what, anyone who would plaster this kind of scurrilous information about someone that's willing to get out into the cesspool of humanity and do some good in it, I have a right, I believe, to question that person as to whether they are my brother or not. And Paul said I shouldn't take my brother to court, but he sure didn't say I couldn't sue the pants off of the heathen. <laughs> and we have it from more than one attorney that this is libelous, slanderous. It has caused harm and damage to Pastor Phil's home, his family, his life, his ministry. And... Uh, You'll have to pray it through, Pastor Phil, but this old German, I'd say sue the bastards. <laughs> well, as uh, old General Patton once said, I guess you all know how I feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I have read some things here that disturb me deeply. And it's things that ought not to be going on in the body of Christ. And uh, there's some folks over in Calvary Chapel that need to clean their act up, too. Now, let me hasten to say, let me hasten to say that the Lord let me be an intermediary, and I got Pastor Chuck Smith and Pastor Phil Aguilar together, and they had a beautiful time of prayer and fellowship and teaching of the Word and reconciliation. And, uh, boy, I was hiring a kite. I thought everything was just fine. I thought everything was settled, that, uh, you know, peace had been reached here, but apparently it has not. And I don't want to get into a whole lot of that right now, but uh, I... I I tell you, and you know who you are, you'd better watch it. You'd better watch it. You're treading on dangerous ground spiritually. You're judging a brother, and you're on real thin ice with God. For just a minute, Phil, maybe you could help me a bit. These... You know, slanderous remarks. These, these, that's made its way into into newspapers. Religious. Um, well, this this one's about TBN. <laughs> we we get our share of it too. But uh, then, uh, you know, this there's your picture. You got you got your picture in the paper too. You know, and it's this same old stuff. You're a cult. You're you're leading young people astray. You're doing all this kind of garbage. All I've seen set free is bless young people and help them out of their drug problems. And, but what, what effect has this had on you, your life, your person, your ministry, your family, your home? Well, at the peak of our ministry, almost four years it's been now, uh, a couple families from our church went to a pastor who oversees hundreds of churches, and uh, they said they had some problems against me. Now, the biblical thing is you should go to Pastor Phil and you work it out together. Well, 
This pastor, for whatever reason, and I still haven't figured out because I don't know his heart, he decided to compile what they had to say, and uh, then he sent me a letter, said that uh, if I didn't come to him, he was going to let the whole body of Christ know what these accusations by these two families were all about. And they said that I arranged marriages, and I didn't let the people in the homes take birth control pills, and that I was a dictator there to set free homes. And so I called him up and said, that's just not true. Well, in the meantime, after he compiled these ac this accusation list, his secretary accidentally passed it out to these 400 plus churches, which I won't name, accidentally, and they passed it to others. And that's how it started almost four years ago. And it just grew and grew till the point is now that, you know, I've threatened their lives, that I'm like uh, the Waco, Texas guy, and they have no control. I haven't even overseen homes for over a year. I went in ranches. Other people take care of all those things. And it just grew and grew because uh, a lot of times Christians even like to hear smut, yeah. scandalous stories. My own mother has had these posters and stuff talking about her son and our ministry put on her front door, right at her house. I mean, it's come against us in such a way where every city that we've moved to, they've come and plastered everywhere, went to the newspapers, and the last threat from one of these pastors was, if you don't stop ministry in 10 days, Phil, we're going to go to the press with these accusations. Remember, they're accusations. And even tonight, none of those pastors would show up because they don't want to restore any relationships. Not once have this, has this pastor, overseer of all these hundreds of churches, ever tried to get any of these people who are disgruntled with me together so we can have fellowship, so we can have a relationship restored. Not once has that ever happened because that would ruin the story. Then they give it to their friends who sell these cult books. Watch out for this guy. And they have one cult book where they have the opening chapter where I meet all the boys, all the men on our city league softball team, which your son played on my team, bat left-handed. That was a terrible thing. We were winning the league. We were winning the game 20-something to nothing. I said, let's give him a chance, bat left-handed. But that was taken that I commanded everybody, you shall bat left-handed. I mean, but see, I, I've been fighting an enemy that won't get into the ring. I, I, they're nowhere. They just come in the middle of the night, put these posters up. They say these things. They make phone calls, write these letters. And I heard a Christian man say that on the Phil Donahue show, he just had to write 15 letters, and 50% of the sponsors pulled out from that show just by 15 letters. That's why it's only a handful of people that need to send letters to pastors, write them things, and, oh, did Phil do that? And then I don't look necessarily like the Pat Boone crowd. You understand what I'm saying? No, no. I mean, I ride a Harley, and then, yes, it's true. Underneath here, I got tattoos all over my body. It just happens. They say, train to serve Jesus Christ and good things like that. The crowd of people that I work with, I don't bump into very many Christians ever where I go and minister in the dark neighborhoods and places. And the kind of people you see in this crowd and myself, we go to these places. Matter of fact, in Pomona, where we have our set free headquarters now, the police chief, the city school district, they've been having war on. And who do they call to their campuses for, for peace on the campuses? The set free group. Because they know they'll go there. We have... We have uh, multitudes of ministries going all o on all over the place because, you see, real set-free Christians, don't, they, just, they don't die. They just multiply. Yeah. Yeah. The children of Israel were afflicted, and I received that right from the Lord when you said, Jim, the more they were afflicted, the more they grew. Now, I don't like this kind of publicity or popularity. It's hurt me and my family where I've had to move them from city to city, town to town, to where right now, tonight, Hardly anybody knows where I live because I don't want them coming there, plastering these things, so we'll have to move out of there. Yeah. For 19 years, I've served the Lord, never raised my hand to a person. And these people, how to thank God on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, that myself and my Christian brothers and sisters, that we aren't people of bitterness, that we're not people of revenge. But I changed my philosophy. I, I used to tell all my Christian brothers and sisters, it took two to fight. No, I found out that you can be laying down and you can have this guy who might be a Christian right now, but keeps stomping and stomping. They've stomped us financially out. They've stomped us no place where we can live, where our kids can go to school. They've stopped all that, but they've not broken the spirit because this is it, baby. Uh, 
My heart has been broken over and over and over. But my spirit has not been quenched. I've reached out at times, been uh, upset, wonder why these people would do this. But God, through Jan and others, shared those scriptures over and over again that have gave me encouragement, strength to go on. And another day comes by where I go, okay, Lord, we're going to do it again. I've wanted to run from the Lord. I've tried to hide. I went to a rock and roll nightclub one night to just listen to a band and say, I want to get away from the Lord. I don't want to serve you. I go into the bathroom, and people walk into the bathroom, Pastor Phil, <laughs> will you pray for me? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, you can't run from him, Phil. It's one of those things where I told Pastor Eddie Banalis at Set Free Pomona and the other pastors we have from here in Las Vegas and all over our Set Free pastors who have been supporting me all through this. I go, if I come back this time, I'm telling you, it's got to be where everybody's shoulder to shoulder. I mean, this is, this is spiritual darkness. This is the enemy. These people aren't, they need to be salvaged. Matter of fact, this pastor that has got this group and he runs this group, they call it, well, we'll deprogram you from set free. No, they're programming them for hate for bitterness, for non-forgiveness. And I say, Pastor, you know who you are. Let God's people go. Amen. Let them be set free in the Lord. You're holding them in bondage. You're not letting them free to enjoy the good things of the Lord. And yes, you're hurting me. Yes, I have feelings and emotions, but I'm telling you, man, you can't put a brother down like this. Papa won't let you get away with it except for a short time. Amen. Well, speaking of set free, tell me what's going on in Pomona. In spite okay. of hell and high water, as in we spite say? of all of that, I, I have met some Christian men and women, and I mean they're here tonight who have just says, Pastor Phil, man, we love you. And when they saw me getting whacked down by these people, they just reached over, and they've loved me. They brought me and ministered to me and my family. And they've given me strength now where I'm telling you, I'm 215 pounds of the best shape I've ever been in <laughs> physically and spiritually, more excited than I've ever been. And I mean, when I wake up in the morning now with my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have just been on a rampage against hell. And our ministry right now, I'm telling you, except for Pomona, it's, What's happening? it's going on. Like I said, we had a small group of us start just about 90 days ago. And I've been the guest speaker there on Sunday mornings and just kind of helping Pastor Eddie Banalis out over there. And I mean, we've watched it go to almost 1,000 people in this last in number of weeks. Days. In 90 days, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> and I, I can see all the bad publicity has really hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and then we've been able to, on Sunday mornings, I'm there in Pomona, and then Sunday nights, I'm with Pastor Tim Trader right over by the Huntington Beach Pier, and we have an outdoor service every Sunday night. There's just more and more and more people right in front of a place called the Java Jungle, right in front of a coffee shop. They let us use the place out there. And Tim Trader, myself, and others, we just preach Jesus out there. We just started another ministry in Chile, one in Peru, another few that are going on in uh, Arizona right now. And it just keeps going on and on and on. And I'm just amazed because I said, Lord, while I've been down, while I've been hurt, the brothers and sisters in the ministry picked up the torch and just kept on going. And now God... I know there's a time right now in my life where the power and the anointing of God is so special, but now it's neat because the Lord has allowed me to do what my gift is, and I have others who have taken on the burden and the weight of the other sure. parts of the ministry, sure. yeah. and so I'm getting to use my gift, which is just to just, man, reach out to the young people, reach out to the gangbangers, the hoodlums, the bikers, whatever, like I said, and just share with them the love of Jesus Christ, and God just bring the drawn people he's just doing something special set free is cooking man it's cooking right now man. It's... Right. <laughs> well you know what there's there's a lesson in all of this yes, always is, for yeah. us and and you know i would even say to, to young people particularly new converts don't let these kinds of things destroy your faith in God and in Christ. Uh, I, I can understand why there'd be a point reached where Pastor Phil and, uh, let me tell you, I've had my resignation written out three times in the last 
21 because years. Of brothers. And, and always because, because of Christian, Christian brothers. brothers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here at, at Trinity Broadcasting Network. And just like you, God would never let me. He you would know, never release me. You know, when we first me. get saved, we're excited about the Lord. And the first thing we want to do is get some bumper stickers for our car, a Bible at the bookstore. Sure. And then we hear about a preacher. So we go hear the preacher. And we come and tell our Christian friends at church, man, I heard Benny Hinn or I heard Oral Rob. And then there's always, oh, you did. That's, you know, the brother goes, what's going on? Well, didn't you know about him? Uh, mm -hmm. And immediately yeah. in their faith, I mean, uh, Tim and I try to teach dog Christians, be a dog Christian, you know? If you come home from work, man, and you burned your face at work, man, that dog's still licking you and hugging you, you know? <laughs> if you come home from work, you lost your leg, that dog still smells you, he just loves you, man. No matter what's happened to you, that dog loves you. We can love like a dog loves, <laughs> then we start being a real Christian. Man, man, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, give us more dogs. <laughs> That's a wonderful, you know, there, and, and I think one of the lessons that all of us can learn through this, Pastor, too, is, you know, there was only one perfect man that ever lived, and his name was Jesus. He was the one perfect one that ever lived, and that's why I worship and serve him right. now we have other leaders in this world but i can guarantee you they're going to fail you they're going to disappoint you that's the way we are yeah. i have disappointed many many people but i'm not their savior right. Right. you need to look to a person and see that perfect jesus living in them but not them being perfect. And I think that's where so many times we get our eyes on people, Phil, and we need to see the Jesus that is perfect, that drives you and is inside you. You know, the first time I ever heard about Pastor Phil, my Joni, my secretary Joni, by the way, she's still here and still wonderful. She's been my secretary for almost 20 years now. But she, one day she was telling me several years ago, how many, 10 years ago or more now, she said, Jan, she said, you know, we get a lot of calls here at TBN about people that are homeless and people that are hungry, people that need clothing. And she said, there's a, there's a pastor up in Anaheim that's absolutely unbelievable. Said every time I call him, no matter two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and we have people here at TBN that need a place to go. She said, I can call Pastor Phil Aguilar and said, he will take them into his home. I said, Joni, no. I said, you're kidding. Nobody does that anymore. She said, no, there is somebody that does it. I said, well, is he a single man? What is this? She said, no, he has a family, children. I said, you mean he takes these homeless right in his home? And that was the first word I ever heard about Pastor Phil. Someone, and you know, people that would criticize. Have you, Pastor, that's criticized this man? taken 40 hell's angels and let them sleep in your home with your children in that home asleep. And you know, I, Pastor, Jesus in you is perfect. Phil Aguilar is not perfect. And I think that's what a lot of people get mixed up when they have people that they look up to. Pastor Phil is not perfect. And we, may, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Your failures and your shortcomings and things that people can realize that you know that, that you're not Jesus. One of the things I guess through all of this is, well, it's been three and a half years, I never criticized back, never sent a bad letter, never, I never did anything and my, even my critics use that and say, see, he's guilty. But in my own personal life, I mean, I got five beautiful children beautiful wife, but in my own personal life, man, hey, I try to let people more than ever know, man, I have blown it yeah. big time, man. I have failed as a Christian man, as a Christian father, as a Christian leader. But the neat thing is, man, is that I read the scriptures and I asked for forgiveness from God. I had a lot of brothers I read about in the Bible from, from King David to Moses to the Apostle Paul who, you know, were bullheaded or independent rebellious. And I share with you, man, during my Christian life, I said, hey, you know what, God? I'm mad because things aren't going like I think they ought to go. 
And boy, I'll tell you, I made that mistake, and boy, God showed me big time. But it was then when the loving brothers came to me. The loving brothers came to me and shared with me the forgiveness in Christ, and they restored me and brought me back in. And that's why I'm excited like that. The people who haven't forgiven me, you're missing out. We can get it together. We can, we, we can get it together. I want to share something very special. When uh, I was raised, I guess by two of the most perfect parents that ever could have raised uh, three daughters. My dad was a minister. Brother Ward talked about him. Beautiful. My mother was a wonderful little nurse that just found Jesus as their Savior at my daddy's meeting when he was preaching. They married and had three daughters. I was raised in a beautiful home. But when I was a teenager, too, I rebelled and had no excuses. You know, a lot of us would like to have some excuses. I have none. I was raised by perfect, beautiful parents that love the Lord. I got to Evangel College in Springfield, Missouri, and absolutely blew it. I mean, I was away from home. Everything that could be done, I did it. Rebellion is rebellion. Sin is sin. And all of us fall into that trap of the devil. He tries to get us all. And in the midst of that, some of, the, some of the men who were sitting in judgment on this little 18-year-old girl that had blown it, yes, but was called in to this meeting with all of these teachers sitting around, some of the very ones sitting in judgment on me and saying she should be thrown out of school were the very ones that had tried to tempt me, the mm. teachers. I never said a word about that, but I was thrown out of school, thrown out of Christian college. Instead of them restoring one, yes. I was thrown out. The reason this word is life to me, after they told me I was through, I was leaving, first girl ever thrown out of Evangel College, I went back to my room, <laughs> my daddy, had sent me a Bible. Laying on my bed, how it got there, I don't know. I fell across the bed. And this scripture came and literally saved my life because I realized, yes, I had blown it. I knew that. I never not admitted that I had blown it. But there was something more in the Christian world, and this is it. This scripture was laying on my bed when the darkest time of my life I needed to hear from Jesus. Dear brothers, if a Christian is overcome by some sin, and I had been, you who are godly should gently and humbly help him back to the right path, remembering that the next time it might be one of you who is wrong. <laughs> this word lived. It lived and it saved my life. <laughs> Share each other's troubles and problems, and so obey our Lord's command. And this is what leaped off of the scripture to me and probably saved my life at that time. If anyone thinks he is too great to stoop to this, he is fooling himself, and he is really a nobody. Ooh. Now that is God's Whoa. words, it's not mine. That's God's words. You know, um, that is God's words. And anyone, any time who sees a brother for any reason fall or fail, the godly ones, and remember this, people. 
It's the godly ones that you will see restoring yes. those back onto the right path. That's God's word. You know what I think is, is the most despicable thing that a so-called Christian can do? is to take the failure, perceived or real, Very of, real a, of a fellow Christian or believer, and report it to a heathen press yeah. for the sole purpose of destroying that ministry or reducing the competition or whatever. I think that is the lowest, most despicable thing because, and I'll tell you why. A few years ago, I got paraded before a kangaroo court of a group of religious leaders <laughs> back east. And scurrilous charges were hurled at me and my character, none of which were true, by the way. But I still had to go through the mockery of the press, the distortions and lies. The press takes a little something and they blow it into a mountain but you know what really grieved me the most pastor phil and i know you you feel the same way it's it's the lost people yes. of this world yes. who see yes. all of this garbage yes. between yes. at least perceived or so-called christians although i still wonder if a real Christian would do anything like this. I have to wonder I that, do. at least. I do. But think of the people that may go to hell yes. because of this kind of garbage that is surfaced in the secular heathen media. I'll tell you one thing. The blood of everyone that goes to hell will be held to your account. You know, Paul, one of the things that, uh, that, that really brought my heart to a point to even, like, really talk to you about maybe sharing with this is when my secretary, Lois, told me, he goes, Phil, you know what? You've got to stop thinking about just yourself and your ministry. Those thousands of gangbangers and young kids and all those people, when they chase you out of a town, Phil, they don't go to them. They don't pick up those kids. They don't minister to them. All they don't want you to do is be there and do it for whatever reason. And so that's the reason that this time I took a stand here and in Southern California, in this area, and everywhere I can possibly go as God allows me the strength and power. I'm just going to go for it, and it, they'll say what they're going to say, do what they're going to do, but everybody knows that I tried to get them together here with us, publicly deal with it, yep. and uh, we're just ready to move on. But those are the threats, you know. We'll go to the press. Well, I guess there can't be much more said about me or much more done. They put my picture next to uh, David Koresh with burning fires of bodies on national TV, and that's not a real happy, comfortable thing to see, yeah. is your face next to that. But um, I guess I'm ready to move on, and my, my life's intact yeah. and ready to do it for the Lord. Yeah. All right, let's pray. We've got time for one more great Carmen video, and I love the title of this one. Satan bites the dust. <laughs> Honey, share quickly some of the prayer needs. And as we go out with this great video song from one of God's great reachers of young people, Carmen, who, by the way, will be at Texas Stadium yes, this Saturday. Saturday, the 22nd of October. 8 p.m. Please go. Christians, turn, turn out, out in mass. Please. Take the lost with you Take and church, let's see churches, just churches. thousands oh. of young people come to know Christ there as Carmen ministers to them as only he can. Honey, so many. Here was another one hit by a car tonight <laughs> on the way in. I hit an, it's probably the guy I hit. <laughs> Just call in and go, whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had an accident on the way into the program tonight, and uh, I'm going to be okay. Thank you for praying. So many are hurting, honey. Right. Every need, every need cancer. God bless yes, many who many are coming to know Christ. Jesus. Diana from yeah. Bakersfield, California. That's where Pastor 
uh, see him where it used to pastor yes. many years ago. That'll bless him. Yes. All right, let's pray. Why don't we just s say our prayer as, are you counting me to the video or is the there only the five minutes left in the program? No, to, this, to, to the other American videos. Oh, okay. Oh, so we play them both. Okay. Okay. Right. We've got time for our prayer. So let's just agree together right now. Father, we lift these needs to you right now and in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you said if even two or three of us agree on earth as touching anything we should ask, it shall be done. Lord, we pray that you'll lift sin burdens by the blood of Jesus. Lord, take away depression and pain of spirits tonight. Oh, Jesus, those who are suffering in body tonight, I come against cancer by the blood and the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are physically suffering tonight and on beds of affliction, we say to you, in the name of Jesus, rise and be healed. Lord, we just agree right now that your mercy and your love and your grace will touch multitudes across this land. And we are in agreement that they are healed by the mighty stripes of Jesus Christ. Lord, we would even, we would even ask you to help us to have grace to pray yes. for our enemies yes, Lord, tonight and for those for who would despitefully de use us and Lord, persecute us. God, by the Holy them, Spirit, we pray them, that Jesus you will deal with them, that you will bring conviction yes. and that you will bring healing bless and restoration them. in the body of Christ that bless the world them. may see it and believe. For you said, Lord, by this shall all men know you're my disciples you have love one for another. We claim all this and we agree upon it now in the name of Jesus and for his glory alone and everybody said. Uh, can you tell us in two minutes how you found Jesus in that prison cell? <laughs> yeah, I was, first off, I was messed up. I was messed up. Uh, 14 years, strung out on drugs, heroin and cocaine, and uh, 125 pounds, he hepatitis, ugly body, ugly face. The only one who wrote me in prison is my mom, who's here, and I used to lie and say that was my girlfriend's writing me, but my mom would write me, and she'd send me little Christian verses. And uh, that just encouraged me when I heard somebody shout out chapel call. I went out down that little hall, and I heard a man preach about the forgiveness and peace you could get through Jesus Christ. And I was always looking for the best deal I could get in life. And when he says you can get peace while you're locked up in prison for absolutely free, I said, uh, I can't pass this up. And uh, I asked Jesus Christ almost 19 years ago now to come into my heart, take over my life. And he gave me peace, not when I got out, but he gave it to me right in there for absolutely free. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and you can have it too tonight if you'll simply... Call the number on your screen. Prayer partners are there to talk with you, pray with you, love you, and agree with you. In Jesus' name. Oh, my. This has been a good night tonight. <laughs> good night. Good, good night. Good. Carmen blessed us Thank and you, is going to lead yes. tons of young people to yes. Jesus this Saturday at the Texas Stadium. Uh, Dr. Ward refreshed our spirits and lifted us. <laughs> How old is he, by the way? 80? <laughs> Dr. Ward is in his mid-80s, I think. He's about 84, 85, somewhere in there. But I'll tell you, that mind is as yeah. sharp as a tack, I'll tell you. He said he'd been married 65 years. He's probably yeah. nearing 90. Yeah, he could yeah, be. Yeah, really? He could be. <laughs> Anyhow. That's great. Thank God. Lord, spare him to yeah. us till you come. We need <laughs> that heart. We need that spirit. We need that mind Thank to you. teach us and bless us and help us. And Pastor Phil... Thank you. Go get him, Tiger. You got him, brother. You got him. Sick him. Jeffrey Pomona, honey from the East, all the way down. All right. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Satan bites the dust. Come on, let's sing it with Carmen.
over it. Shut it down. I'm hunting for someone, y'all. He's a lying, thieving rattlesnake, and he's broken every law. He's terrorized the lives of men, and he's under arrest because I've been sent with a warrant from the body of Christ. Well, tell me why it's there. Satan, bite the dust. <laughs> Spirits, I'm running you out of town. Depression, strife, disease, and fear, your posse's going down. Oh, last dinner for the dog Batman. We sent him over the box. But I know who I am through Jesus Christ, so I talk to you demons like dogs. Satan, you coward, you molester of souls, I command you to appear. You're hiding from the presence of God, but I can feel your fear from here. You ran on my keyboard long enough, you got something in your crawl. A praying church wants you to know. No one. Your kingdom's gonna fall. There's gonna be trouble here tonight. Cause I represent a whole new breed of Christian of today. from you through Jesus Christ, so hit the road. You spirit of infirmity, ye ain't welcome here no more. We lay hands on the sick and they recover, so out the door. You demon of false religion, you prayed on mine so simple. I bind the spirit of your song, so now come on! Play that in your temple. Satan, you're next in line. I'm gonna hit you where it hurts. Cause I'm tired of you and my family. And I'm tired of you and my church. I'm not my own, I'm bought with a price. I'm a Holy Ghost filled man. And I'm tolling the bell of your eternal destruction across the land. Cause I represent 